I think I first got the idea for Civilization back uh, in the late 70s. It goes back to a game called Risk that I played when I was a kid where uh, the idea is to take over the entire world. But we wanted to make the process a little more interesting by taking you through the whole history of civilization, uh, discovering technologies, uh, having uh, big military battles, diplomacy, politics, all those kind of things. We tossed them all in and that turned into civilization. The biggest challenge, uh, I think, is the legacy. This is Civilization 3. That is a big build, Phil. I think our games are designed for people who like to think and make decisions and imagine themselves in kind of interesting situations. Uh, our games are not uh, about uh, reflexes and hand -eye coordination. They're games about thinking, uh, planning, strategizing, and, uh, and winning. One of the new ways you can play the game is a, is a cultural strategy. And this is sort of a non-military way to gain land and cities and, and people. You know, like you can take over my city, but you can't convince my people that your culture is better than mine. If you actually ratchet your culture high enough, cities that border your territory will actually start converting to your civilization. I try to build these big honking uh, cultural centers in the game which make it difficult for other people to take over my empire because when they do, they get sort of subsumed in my culture. I think we have a kind of a unique game development style in that we're all primarily game players. We love to play games. <laughs> and this here is Civ 3. I'm going to start a new game. We don't design games in a vacuum with a big storyboard and flowchart and put a bunch of pieces together and hope that it works. We're playing the game day in and day out. And if we find something we like, we build on it. If we find something we don't like, we take it out of the game and put something else in. So you're getting a game in Civ 3 that's been played and played and played by people who really love games. There are a lot of games where you would have to play the interface and sort of figure out the interface as a puzzle. So we decided to strip the interface down, take art away that was just there for art's sake, and uh, leave a very clean interface. And we got this thing stripped down to uh, sort of fighting weight. What size world would you like? This game runs amazingly smooth. You can play this game for hours, never have a problem, never. One other thing that we, we've added to the game is that we have line of sight rules for uh, guys as they move around on the map. Like if you put a guy on the mountaintop, he can see you know, a lot further than he can see on the flat lands. And this is extremely crucial in the early part of the game uh, for exploration. Audio in Civ 3, we have really reached new levels and heights with, uh, in terms of timing specifically to unit animations. Uh, audio times perfectly in terms of footsteps. When you see the footsteps of the actual unit, the sound of the footsteps actually times perfectly with that every time. Uh, sword slashes are timed perfectly. The music in Civ 3 is huge. There's just tons and tons of music, so there's a whole lot less repetition in the music that you hear when you play the game. The graphics are so much better. The animation, the whole screen comes alive. You're seeing the leader face to face, mano a mano, and they're reacting right to your every move. The minute you make any kind of a deal with them, they immediately begin to show displeasure or happiness, um, but they may not be disclosing their full feelings to you. So sometimes they can, uh, they can raw deal you. When you first meet them initially, they'll sort of be in, in character, so to speak, but as you go, certainly they jump right out of character. You're, you're able to change history in that regard. You'll see a side of Gandhi you've never seen before. Um, I don't think I've ever seen Abe Lincoln smile. Uh, well, one of the things I'm really excited about with the AI for Civ 3 is that it picks up off of, of cues from uh, decisions that you make. For example, if you use the city governors, um, it will react to choices that you make. So if you decide to have a city stop building swordsmen and start building a temple because you're no longer at war, you just want, decide you want to develop your culture more, um, the governors will learn that and they'll start making suggestions like that in other cities. They might suggest to build a library or a coliseum or a courthouse. We just got an email, uh, 3 o'clock in the morning. Well, I actually think it was closer to about 5 a.m. 
programmer says, you know, uh, I was supposed to be checking for memory leaks, but uh, three hours later, I was more worried about the, the Egyptians on my left flank. The next thing I know, uh, I was looking outside my window, and it was dawn. I mean, he was obviously knew that he had to get some work done, but he couldn't help himself. He couldn't help uh, playing what he had made. I had forgotten completely what I was supposed to be doing. I was that sucked into this game. By the time I finally realized what I was doing, it, uh, it was amazing because I know this game. I helped write this game, and I spent like a year of my life working on this game, and then I was still drawn into it. You know, it's the only game where it's just one more turn, and I just can't stop, and I couldn't stop, even though it was Sunday morning at five in the morning. That is the biggest draw of this game, is the, the one more turn uh, legacy. Uh, just one more turn, give me one more turn. And of course people play and they play and then they look up and it's 3 a.m. They gotta go to work tomorrow and they're cursing us under their breath. You, you're ruining my life because I just had to have that one more turn. Everyone that has played Civ seems to have a story to tell about their game. And we're hoping that after you play that, that you'll have a story to tell. Come back and tell me about uh, your great battle against the Romans or how you were the first to build the Great Wonder or how after a titanic struggle you finally took over the world. So find your own story in Civ and, and come back and tell it to us. And you know, I hope you love the game. It's, um, it's been a labor of love for us and we hope that you love it as much as we do. If you just purchased Civ 3, don't plan on doing anything meaningful with your life for the next six to nine months. Don't plan on helping out around the house. Uh, don't plan on getting ahead at work. Yeah, it's all fruitless. And you're going to be writing letters saying how much you hate us for making this product because we've ruined your life again. And, uh, and we'll be happy for that.